Hello everybody, this is Jane the Haunter and today what we have to unbox and set up is the new for 2023 Lowe's Haunted Living Techie Toys 12 foot animated scarecrow. This is a prop I have been excited for since the photos leaked. Uh, I don't know when this one's photos leaked. It's been quite a while now, but I honestly prefer this one over the Inferno Scarecrow from the Home Depot. There we go. Box give me a little trouble. So I was really, really excited to see this guy. And then on top of that, the box is way smaller than the Inferno is. It's probably the second smallest 12 foot box. I believe the smallest is the mummy from Lowe's. The witch is probably actually contender for the second smallest one, even though she's not really 12 foot. Only her hat makes her that big. But opening the box, this is what it looks like right off the bat. There's this cardboard with instructions, adapter, and tethers with some pretty good quality hooks from the looks of it there. Those are some pretty thick ropes as well. That's nice to see that it has tethers to help hold it down. Empty box used as spacer. This I presume is the clothing from the looks of it. And everything in here seems to be pretty tightly packed. Ground stakes, those are some pretty big ground stakes. Assuming they, definitely not. Those do not take up the whole box. But um, everything, oh wow, that's actually a pretty nice plastic for the rib cage. Okay, man, just overall, this looks to be pretty great quality. I'm really, I'm really excited for this. So let me get all these parts out and unpackaged and then we'll show you everything that he comes with. Here are all of the pieces out of the box. You have the weatherproofed control box. I saw the speculation online that this was not made for outdoors, but this is sealed just like any other outdoor animatronic. The really great quality base with all kinds of stabilizers on it, zip ties. Mine is missing a little metal hook, which I will put on your screen now. It goes on the scythe that is replaceable. So I'm gonna either replace that or just utilize the zip tie. It's, it doesn't hold anything crazy on. You have these two wires here, seven ground stakes, the massive scythe end, the three pieces that attach to that, the bag with the shirt, ruffle, and pants, the back frame, the shoulder frame. These, I believe, are his arms. That is the body frame, the massive hip loop, the huge waist part, a pole with a projector light on it, the four stabilizers, and various leg poles. Now, let's get to a setup. The first thing that you're going to do is attach various leg poles, matching A1 to A1 and B1 to B1, and then on this side, A to A and B to B. Now we are going to slide over the pants. Make sure the part labeled front on the pants is lined up with the part labeled front on the base. After sliding on the pants, go ahead and match C1 to C1 and C to C. Next, match D1 to D1 and then D to D on the sides of the poles, ensuring that the part labeled front on the waist frame is lined up with the front on the pants and front on the base. Now utilizing the box, go ahead and lay it down forward so we can proceed with the setup of the upper body. Once he is laid down, go ahead and attach the waist bracket. Once that is attached, find your pole with the spotlight on it labeled E, snap lock that in, and then locate your upper body frame labeled F and J and snap lock that in to the light fixture pole. Next, snap lock in all four snap poles of the rib cage into the pole labeled J and F. And now you are going to attach or slide on the shirt over the frame, velcroing the uh, velcro strips along the rib cage to the shirt. After velcroing on the shirt, locate the lower back portion of the prop, zip tying it to the shoulder frame, making sure to line up those colors of the hooks, attaching one zip tie by one hook, another by the other, and then the third by the third and final hook. Then you are going to slide on these prongs that sink in pretty deep into the frame, 
into the body structure to give his shoulders some form. Next, go ahead and snap lock on the scarecrow's head and run that cable going down all the way to the control box and plug in that wire so his eyes and mouth get power. And then now would be a good time to go ahead and untie the cable from here for the chest light and run that down to the control box as well so that way that fire effect gets power. Next, start feeding your arm poles through the sleeves matching M to M in the shoulders and K to K. Then go ahead and attach the coordinated labeled other poles that form the rest of the arms at the elbow. Next, go ahead and assemble the scythe matching all of the letters to each other. And then normally a pin would slide in here with a cotter pin, but as I stated in the parts list, mine did not have it. So I utilized a zip tie just for the video until I can go over to Lowe's and grab a new pin. Now, utilizing these orange plastic connectors, you are going to attach them to the black metal arms. After attaching the scythe, go ahead and stand him up off the box and attach the stabilizer poles. I have a brick back there because obviously that pole cannot go over that. Then afterwards, you're going to go ahead and just Velcro the bottoms of the shirt and the pants to the waist bracket and anchor down your stakes into the ground. And I have to say, I am really impressed with how sturdy he is. Just not only the build quality, but with the tethers anchoring him down. Uh, wind is currently going about 30, 40 miles an hour, and he has not been budging at all much. He's standing pretty strong, and I am really, really impressed. This is awesome. Then you are going to go ahead and open the Velcro here where the control box is. There's all your controls, and you're going to plug it in your adapter and set it to your liking as well as adjust the volume control to whatever liking you want and then he will activate. We're going to do a demo of him in the light and then a demo in the dark. And here we'll do his demo of two of his phrases and then we'll show him in the dark. And spirits haunt the night. Beware to all. My side is sharp and sure to fright. <laughs> I love this guy. He looks awesome. Way larger proportions than a lot of the Home Depot ones, which I really, really like. The harvest moon lights the blackened sky. And here he is in the dark. The harvest moon lights the blackened sky. Dark creatures wander in the pale moonlight, searching for new prey to join them in the night. Run for your life and don't look. I absolutely love his laugh. Halloween is upon us, and spirits haunt the night. Beware to all, for my side is sharp and sure to fright. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the 12 foot tall animated scarecrow from Lowe's. 
as I previously stated, I did say I liked him more than Inferno, and after owning him, putting him together, and seeing his quality, he does hold up to that statement, and I am not going back on that. He is my second favorite 12 foot, with number one being Cackles the Clown from Party City. This guy's build quality is phenomenal. He looks great. Uh, one thing that I completely forgot to do in the setup was pose his hat. His hat does have a metal wire in the brim, so it is bent down and you can't see it the clearest. And then the actual uh, top of the hat also has a wire so you can bend it. I don't know how strong the wire is. It feels pretty thick, but I don't know if it's gonna hold up great in let's say uh, strong wind per se it might droop down regardless it's a pretty neat hat it'll look pretty nice uh, the build quality is great the use of the tethers with the building hooks were great uh, the stakes he comes with are pretty good I have not used them I don't ever trust the stakes that these props come with I always always buy stakes uh, these heavy-duty metal stakes from Walmart I will put a link in the description below and a picture on your screen right now I use those for everything I use those for Jimmy collapsible animatronics with those bulky bases I use them for my 12 foot props I use them for all like everything I use outside I use those and they never ever let me down so I have two kind of flaws with this guy and that is the arms have no kind of form that is easy to fix with pool noodles but then the staff is also kind of cheap. The, this actual part is actually a pretty thick plastic. This is gonna be good, but that part up there, uh, the actual tip of the scythe is not the thickest plastic, but I understand why, because that is a large piece. And if it was any heavier, that would cause a lot of stress on this plastic stick and potentially the prop itself. So I definitely see from the engineering standpoint why they did that, but I will definitely at some point likely slice it open and put a wooden dowel in it because I worry of it just getting too hot in the South Texas heat and potentially bending over and drooping and looking weird so if it does get to that point i will just put a little slit in it and put a wooden dowel it's not wooden dowels are not too heavy it'll be perfectly fine if i have to i'll run a piece of wood all the way through the stick and it'll be no problem the frame is built and welded very well it'll hold that extra tenth of a pound on it no problem so this guy is great the clothing is great it is a nice thick weatherproof material I saw the speculation online of this guy not being weatherproof but it is indeed made for outdoors and just like all of the other 12 foots it does say to not leave it up in high winds and damaging weather what that is saying is like hurricane force winds all that stuff hail per se extreme extreme like flash flooding and stuff like that of course if it's just gonna be out in weather like this or rain a thunderstorm downpour it'll be perfectly fine it is sealed the base and uh, just structure in general is painted with sealant the control box is sealed the cords and connections are sealed there are suction plugs on them and everything this guy was very very well designed to put together it's gonna last for years and years to come and as I said before the tethers are adding a lot of stability to him and even strong winds he's gonna hold up perfectly fine the only thing uh with our 12 footers we chain them up to trees so that way when the wind comes we don't have to take them down and we have never had an issue the only thing that we usually do or will do is like for the witch for example we will take her off of her broom and put her in the garage and like the inferno and pumpkin and uh skeletons and wolf's arms we will go ahead and just twist those off and throw those into the garage because those twist tabs are oftentimes very very weak points on these guys and if you do have them broken the 12 foot skeleton owners group the 12 foot skeleton fan clubs group do have a lot of people who have 3d printed those with much stronger materials this guy's instance and strong winds we are going to have him tied up to a tree so we don't have to take him down but i will be taking that off because i do not trust that at all especially that scythe like if that scythe was in 50 mile an hour wind that would indeed break so overall i highly highly recommend this guy at 398 i'd honestly say that is far from not worth it that is a hundred percent worth it i absolutely love this prop i'm honestly debating getting two 
uh, this one and another one because we do decorate two houses and I would love to have this guy also at my grandparents house because I'm not doing Halloween over there anymore as we have moved into a new neighborhood and I will be able to do uh, an actual home haunt so I will be doing a walkthrough uh, this year so that's gonna be a lot of fun so I'm excited to start haunt builds with you guys and this guy is definitely being used in our home haunt this year again if you can if you can get this guy 100% recommend it you won't regret it he is awesome Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Oh, my side is sharp and short.